Greetings. I'd like to invite you over the next few minutes to share with us one of the most profound experiences at the Bear Creek School, our graduation ceremony. Our graduates stand ready to launch into their colleges and careers and have spent many, many years integrating faith and excellence, forming a way of life. G.K. Chesterton once said that education wasn't about subjects, that it was about the transformation of a way of life. And as you watch this video, I hope you see that in our graduates, in their words and in their actions. I would like to thank you, class of 2010, for the heart-stopping honor of being invited to speak to you today. In thinking over this request, it occurred to me that the most important bits of advice I can offer center around truths you've known for a very long time. The first of these truths is the importance of presence. The importance of presence isn't only important in school. Showing up as a rule for living is even more important. My point is this. Bear Creek has been the site and even catalyst for my development in all aspects of my diverse life. Rather than restrict my interests, it has cultivated them. Rather than trying to find a mold for me to squeeze into, it has challenged me to make my own renaissance mold, an organic list of my own choosing. I have come to love being involved in as many things as I can possibly get my hands on here. And this is a direct result of my experience in the classrooms, hallways, and miscellaneous niches of the school that has truly become my home. Bear Creek has permitted us to flourish in so many ways that with our background, we will be able to bring honor to God no matter which direction our paths take. I have been guided to take ownership not only of my studies, but also of my faith. It is not something to be taken lightly and I have come to the realization that being a part of Bear Creek is not only about absorbing its benefits, but also about investing in, in its future. Bear Creek gave me the leadership opportunities to pour into others what my teachers and classmates so richly poured into me. Someday, when our roads and red lights and green lights lead us back into each other's lives, we will start right where we left off, not missing a beat. But that is for later. It is time to move on into the welcoming fresh new air, into the world. Though we know each other, we will surprise each other with what we can do. I know without a doubt we can go far beyond the borders of this town. Our influence and our reach and our lights will spread as we grow in the values Bear Creek has taught us to cling to and uphold. What an exciting thought. Piam will be the first to tell you that getting in the cockpit is not enough for a pilot to be successful. A less than attentive pilot will not be able to fly safely as his job requires fine-tuned vision, skill with instrumentation, and understanding of helpful but very complicated technologies. A successful flight also requires a flight plan since the goal is, after all, to get somewhere. As Christian travelers were headed toward God, it is an exhilarating, perilous journey, and gladly we have the help of Christ and the Holy Spirit as we make our way. But what happens when our intended course hits turbulence? Do we close our eyes, hold on, and hope for the best? I say no. Trusting God means reorienting ourselves. It means choosing a perspective of eternal truth in spite of momentary circumstances. This reorientation often happens 30 seconds at a time. It is, in fact, my unscientifically proven theory that we really only get the next 30 seconds of this life for certain. In these increments, we are offered the choice to spend them beautifully or to squander them. The last truth I want to emphasize is the importance of being genuine. No one has to tell any of those kindergarten girls that wearing a pleated plaid jumper means one should twirl in circles. And none of Mrs. Erickson's six-year-old boys need lessons in getting dirty while digging up worms. Certainly, these behaviors are genuine to the little person experience. They come naturally. As we get older, though, we become more removed from these untaught expressions of self. 
We scrutinize ourselves against measures of coolness or accomplishment or beauty. We forget how to just be. Acts of temperance, prudence, justice, and fortitude can become habitual, like skirt twirling or worm digging. And how do they become so? 30 present, alert seconds at a time. I encourage you all to always seek the truth and to go forth and live joyous and noble and adventurous lives in service of God and man. O Lord, our Lord, this joyous day of celebration is a day of culmination. Take the many years of stewardship over these lives and the teaching, training, and equipping of the young men and women who have graduated today and use each and everyone to extend the kingdom of Christ across the nations and the globe in all the years that lie ahead until Christ shall come. You may now turn your tassels. Congratulations. Congratulations.